Okay, Debbie, what I thought we might do is talk about the importance of you taking your medication. Is that okay? I don't want to talk about it. You don't listen to what I've got to say. I don't agree with what you've got to say, so there's really not much point. But you know if you don't take medication, you're going to end up in hospital. Yeah, but I don't need this right now. This is all you want to talk about. It makes me feel worse. You know that. But Debbie, every time you stop taking it, you relapse. Your psychosis increases, the auditory hallucinations worsen, and you get paranoid about the neighbours. You end up being readmitted to an acute unit. Would you want to live next door to my neighbours? It's not the medication that's making me feel ill. It's the stress I have at home. They shout through the walls at night. They throw rubbish in my garden. They steal my mail and they've even painted their door red. Right, OK, yes, we've talked about this many times in the past and I know you think your neighbours are particularly bad, but these experiences are all part of you having a serious mental illness. I guess a key point I want to try and get across is that taking medication is an important thing for you. We've discussed this within the team and everybody agrees and feels it's really helpful and useful. You don't have to take it. You don't have to take it every day and you don't have to feel awful every day. Surely you can see there are some benefits, some helpful bits. You're not listening. I can hardly stay awake during the day. <laughs> they can see that. They can see I'm weak. It makes everything worse. Well, we're stuck then, aren't we? Because we both know you need to take medication and you constantly say that you don't want to and every time you stop, you become unwell. I stopped taking it because I don't bloody need it. The problems don't go away. They painted their door red and they know what that means and it's got nothing to do with tablets, illness, hospitals or anything. Can you not see that if you leave hospital without the protection of your tablets, we're going to end up in another crisis situation, wind up bringing you back here and the whole cycle will just repeat itself? Have you just listened to anything that I've just said? Well, if you'll just listen to me, I'm trying to help you break that cycle. But it's my life, though. It's me who has to take it. And every time you talk about it, it reminds me of everything that's happened and everything that's gone wrong. And I, I don't want there to be anything wrong with me and taking tablets every day. You, you all just want me controlled. I haven't got any choice. You always have a choice, Debbie. Thanks for coming along to see me. Now, as I said last time we met, I wanted to follow the objective in your care plan and spend about 10 minutes talking about your medication. You might remember when we negotiated this. You identified it as a problem that we wanted you to take medication and you don't want to. And I said it would help me get a better understanding of what you think about medication and how it fits in with your life. I don't want to talk about it. You don't listen to what I've got to say. And and I don't agree with what you've got to say, so there's really not much point. Well, we said we could just talk about it and see if we could come to some agreement. I know you don't like taking anything, but I thought it could be useful to see if you thought if there were any good things about it, as well as the not so good things. I don't like it. I don't want to take it. Can't you do something about that? Tell me a bit more about what it is you don't like. So you've been taking it off and on for a few months and you're getting some unpleasant effects. So you feel tired and you get headaches and some problems you find embarrassing and that's why you want to stop taking it. Yeah, it's happened before with other stuff that I've been prescribed. But then I, I get hassle from the nurses and the doctors and they just want me back in hospital. And you don't feel you're taken seriously when you talk about this? No. They tell me I, I look OK, but I, I don't feel normal at all. How do you feel? 
numb. I feel numb most of the time. I'm not completely sure what you mean by that. Could you explain? Not really. Numb. Not normal. Hmm. It doesn't sound pleasant. It's not. And then they go, oh, that, that's just your illness or, or you're paranoid. But if, if sometimes I stop taking the tablets, then I, I get clear-headed. I can think. OK. Would anything else make you stop taking the medication? I have a bit more energy when I'm not on it. And does that last? For a while. But then I get all nervous and jumpy. It would be nice to take something that didn't have any side effects. There's a lot of stuff going on in my life that I need to sort out. But whenever I go and see a doctor, he, he just focuses on the medication. I've got to sort out these problems with my neighbours. So you're saying the side effects have a big effect on you. And when you stop, you feel more alive for a while. But when you see a doctor and nurse, they just hassle you about how important it is to keep on taking it. But you seem to be saying that you're not opposed to medication, that you don't think it's a completely bad thing, and that you might take something that helps you if it doesn't cause so many side effects. And you'd like people to pay attention to the other problems in your life. Is that a reasonable summary of where you're at? It's OK. So, how would you like things to be different? But there is no medicine that's side effect free, so perhaps we can talk about the side effects you're most worried about and those you're less worried about. You might feel you can make a better choice if you have more information. Are there other things that concern you? Mm. Well, if I have to take something, I only want to take it once a day. So, convenience is also an issue. Is there anything else? What about my neighbours? The doctors say if I take the tablets, everything will be all right, but nothing is. I haven't forgotten about the problems with the neighbours, but we did say we'd look at that separately. I don't want to be fobbed off again. I'm happy to talk about the things you said you wanted to sort out. Perhaps I can just sum up where we've got to first. I've also got some ideas about things we could try out in the future, and you can let me know whether you agree with those things or not. Is that OK? OK, but I'm still not happy taking it. Yeah, I, I get that. You're right. There can be advantages to taking tablets. It's helped with some stuff. But it's the staying awake. I get so sleepy, I can't get up in the morning. I go to bed early, but I just can't keep going. And that gets confused with the numbness. I want to talk to people. I want to do the stuff I used to be interested in. I've lost so much of the normal stuff in my life. You know, I can't, you know. I don't go out. I can't have a boyfriend. So it's more than a lack of emotion. Other things in your life have changed as well. There's a lot of loss there. Maybe you don't feel ready to talk about that yet? All right. Tell me about the numbers. It's the lack of emotion. I don't know. I 
I feel completely cut off, withdrawn from the world. It's like there's this thick sheet of glass between me and everyone else, and everyone can see it. I don't look normal. And if I go out, I can't follow what's going on. When I talk to the neighbours, I'm completely spaced out. They can see I'm not right. How are you managing at the moment? That's why sometimes I don't take the tablets. And then the numb feeling passes a bit. You've talked about the tiredness and the difficulty staying awake during the day. What do you do to cope with that? I, I kind of battle against it. If I remember, I set my alarm, and when I wake up, I have a Red Bull or a really strong coffee. And how do you feel after that? Really hyped up, like I'm buzzing, but then, then I can't think. I'm, I'm a mess. I'm edgy and wondering what's happening, and if I go out, everyone starts getting at me. So, even if the caffeine gives you a boost first thing, if you have too much of it, there's a downside to that? Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe we can look at how useful that is then and look at some alternatives as well. Yeah. Now? Well, first of all, I'd like to see where we've got to about this whole issue of medication. Then in future sessions, we can look at all these practical problems in more detail. For instance, I remember you said you've had difficulty actually getting your prescriptions and also with remembering to take your tablets even when you wanted to. Yeah. Now, I know we might need to set aside what you're currently taking, as you've said, you're particularly unhappy with it. Sometimes we prescribe for people and we assume they want it when actually they're not ready. But now we've looked at some of the pros and cons of taking medication, how prepared are you to take it? It's hard. Sometimes it's useful to look at this kind of readiness on a continuum, like on an imaginary line, where at one end you don't feel ready for any number of reasons, so you're not willing to take anything, and then at the other end you can see the advantages outweighing the disadvantages, and you're willing to take something very specific. So. Where would you put yourself on this line? Uh, I think I'm unsure. S sometimes I know. It's not that I think everything's all right. Like you were saying, there are times when I'm, I'm really stressed and I've got all, those, all that stuff going on in my head. And I know I don't like it if I can't sleep. I remember what it was like when I had that clear spell, and that wasn't all the medication. No, not at all. Sometimes I do think I don't need it, and, and sometimes I'm not sure. So, you're somewhere in the middle at the moment, perhaps. OK. I wonder, how important is it to you that you're taking medication? Well, if we look at it on a scale from 1 to 10, where 1 is not important to take medication and 10 is very important to take medication, where would you put yourself on that scale? Probably a 5, maybe a 4, maybe higher than that if it was the right stuff. I, I just think if you've got problems, you should try and sort it out by yourself, not rely on medication. But, but the right one can help. OK, so it's four or five. Are there any other reasons why you've put yourself at that particular point on the scale? Maybe because I don't need to take it all the time. Can we do just one more thing today to look at your concerns about medication? I thought you were supposed to persuade me to take it. I want to talk about what works for you and give you information that helps that. Is that OK? Well, I've got a list of statements here that people that take medication frequently say. 
I'll read through the statements with you and you can let me know whether you agree with them or not. All right? So, I've got the first one here. I don't need to take medication once I feel better. Do you agree or disagree with that? I have to agree, don't I? I don't want to take it in the first place. <laughs> and the second one, I'm no different on or off medication. Disagree. I am different when I'm on medication. Would you like to say a bit more about that? And finally, by staying on medications, I can prevent having a mental breakdown. Do you agree with that? Sort of. I know that taking medication helps me with getting stressed, but I don't want to rely on it like a crutch. OK. Well, thanks for bearing with me today. We've gone through a lot, so I'll just summarise once more where we've got to.